Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, welcome to the new edition, the new 5 o'clock edition, the early bird special of the <laughs> Board of Trustees of the uh, One trustee short, I don't know if he's coming late, but we'll save him a seat. If so, Fire Chief and this officer this evening. I would entertain a motion to adopt minutes of February 4th, 2019. I so move. So motion, and I'll second the motion. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? Mm -hmm. I saw no additions or subtractions or anything. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, hearing none, may we, may we vote? Sure. Yes. And Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Now I entertain a motion to approve payment of the bills $55,939.82. Broken down general fund eight thousand ninety six dollars thirty seven cents fire fund thirty one thousand eight hundred sixteen dollars and eight cents cemetery fund one thousand twenty four dollars and fifty six cents EMS billing five thousand one hundred twenty four dollars forty one cents and road bridge eight thousand eight hundred ninety three dollars and forty four cents who does that big one and capital fund projects nine eighty four ninety six is there a motion I move that we approve payment of these bills. So that, further discussion regarding payment of these accounts? I can just tell you the reason why the road and bridge is big is because of the uh, property insurance. Oh. That's the biggest part. It's all inflated, same with the general fund and the, uh, the fire. There you go. Okay, thank you. There we go for the discussion. May we vote, please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Correspondence for this period, uh, announcement from Charter Communications, uh, League of Women Voters Newsletter, OTA Association Monthly Newsletter, uh, email from Connections, uh, email from uh, the Ohio Cemetery Association about the uh, annual convention coming up, email from MSA and USDA about the bid questions, more emails from MSA about bid documents, about, about bid documents and slab loadings. An email from DMS Inc. about the postcard mailing and invoice, um, which they never had sent us. It was mailed, and uh, it was never invoiced, so now we've taken care of that. CareWorks quarterly report. Um, <coughs> email from DCA Roofing. I'm wondering about the new firehouse roof. Um, Bob Geyer's annual county uh, meeting uh, announcement and uh, RSVP forms, which Need to be sent in here eventually, everybody, like the after tomorrow, I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, the minutes from uh, February 7th, MVRPC Executive uh, Committee and news release about the uh, Miami Valley Coordinating Public Transportation Human Services Transportation Plan. Whew, that's a big one. Fun status and preparation status for today. Any further correspondence? Uh, I have one from the Bobcat. Company, so I'll get to that one. We can the road. Excuse me. Fire department report, please. Alrighty. <clears throat> Since the last board meeting, there have been 39 EMS incidents, uh, 18 fire incidents, and two fire safety inspections. Of all that, nothing of real super consequence. <coughs> just the usual. Um, <clears throat> just for your information, for the month of January, our first full month of Bath Township, we had 12 responses to Bath Township or our portion of it. Um, five of those were car crashes, two were fire alarms, and five were medical incidents. You can drive in that township? There was all on 230. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, three were on 235, one on Trayvon Road, and one on Fairfield, at Fairfield and uh, West Eagle. Mm -hmm. Any of them give you any issues, problems, anything that you need to review about how you would in the future. No, the only thing we're looking into is <clears throat> um, changing our the Metroid responders who are coming into Bath Township to assist us. Um, kind of change the order of who comes in. We had a fire alarm, one of the two fire alarms, they were at the same place, they in the old country club. And um, it was a Sunday night. <clears throat> and Joe and uh, Nick Miller Jacobson were on, on duty that night. They were on a medical call in Clifton when this fire alarm came in. It was mm -hmm. 11 something at night. Um, so they were doing that. 
dispatch dropped a couple tones, nobody else was responding, so they asked dispatch to send the next mutual aid unit, which normally would have been the city of Fairborn, but since they're not responding to that mm -hmm. township, it was Zinga Township. <coughs> normally that's not too bad, except that night Zinga Township was staffing the south station instead of the north station. <coughs> so 1952 responded, but it's coming all the right. way from the south side of Zinga, yeah. which gave Joe and Nick time basically to leave the call in Clifton because there was no room. We'll come back here, get our fire truck, and go out to the scene. They canceled Zinga Township. All was fine. It was a false alarm. They were on site for about 40 minutes, talking with the key holder about different options for key boxes and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it uh, was a positive experience overall. Um, unfortunately, some of the township, the Bath Township trustees, critics picked up on that and uh, put it all on mm -hmm. the social media stuff. Um, so. We're looking at um, moving Rent Patterson fire up. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, currently they're low down. We don't work with them a whole lot. But um, realistically, Rent Patterson's, I don't know, let's say six, that's not fair. But they're fully staffed, often waiting for something to do. Only three or four miles away. Exactly. Where, where are they on the base? <coughs> they have off the base. three stations, I believe. So the one closest to us is where the headquarters is, off of 444. Area A, I think that is. <laughs> um, and they've got a massive firehouse there and they're staffed with, I think, something like 18 guys or something. That's the one that responds in the Fairborn most of the time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, I haven't, I'll see Chief King tomorrow on the Chief's meeting, but I haven't had a chance to speak to him yet about it. But apparently he <coughs> mentioned that to Steve Ross that they would be happy to do that. So, um, so they're, and they're close and usually staffed. There are the two stations, there's one that's just the flight line station. And then there's uh, one in the, the lab section area, B, I think it is, um, which would not help us much. It's supposed to be the group, but. but I mean, they've always been a big help for Fairborn because they show up with a bunch of guys who are well trained and well equipped. And, uh, so they could basically zip into the back end of Fairborn there. Broad Street and into Central or whatever, and then on to Dayton Hill Springs. And yep. then, uh, yeah, they must come right down Dayton Hill Springs, go mm -hmm. right past the Fairborn Firehouse. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, so I got, I'll talk to Chief King about that tomorrow morning. And, and Stephen, they're in this, they're in the original mutual aid contract, so, mm -hmm. um, then they can, so they can do that. And obviously, I mean, there's always, you know, they could be busy with something else, or if there's some security <laughs> threat, they don't need the base, but hopefully that's not going to be right. <laughs> How far away is Bethel Township's response area? How the part that they respond to? Well, I mean, where they would respond from. I don't know how many facilities they have. They are coming from uh, Medway. From Medway. Yeah, <laughs> Garlaw and Medway Road, I think, mm -hmm. is where their station is. So they kind of zoom over and come down Spangler, I think. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure. I, heard, I, I hear they've been pretty busy in their section. Well, okay. so. But I, I haven't spoken with Jake mm -hmm. since the early stages of <laughs> this. So. Um, Did you get any more requests from Beth Township about a, a personal appearance? No. Uh -huh. No, I um, I sent the the board a monthly report with mm -hmm. breakdowns that um, I had done for a, a resident who requests a public records request mm -hmm. for times. So I sent that along, and then um, Trustee Ross contacted me and had some questions, and seemed very happy as long as I, I told him I would send, you know, once a month, mm -hmm. send those over, and that if they ever need me for something special, you know, just let me know, I'm happy to, if I can make it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I have a regular point of here. <laughs> and he seemed very happy with that, but very pleased, so. <coughs> um, as we've, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Moving right along as we've slowly been increasing the number of members, it's been pretty clear, especially with a lot of younger people in the department, that we need more supervisors. Mm -hmm. Currently, we only have three, which includes Denny and, I, <laughs> and Nate. That's it. So, we opened up a promotional process, um, thinking that we'd get maybe two guys into three captains. So, that's a good pool to choose from. We don't have any captains and lieutenants. And right, we just have Nate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> chief, assistant chief, and lieutenant, and that's it. So yeah, this would be have all kinds of officers. Have tons. <laughs> um, so this would be for sergeant. Uh, I'm not sure how many positions. So we, the, the organizational chart is three, mm -hmm. under three. So we'll see. Um, 
So I'm meeting with all the candidates Tuesday night, and then uh, there's a written test they have to do, uh, two tabletops, and then uh, two interviews. Mm. So my event process, it should be 2027, uh, and we should have some of the place. Mm -hmm. So um, I should also point out that um, in the bills we had on the visa, there was a bill for Facebook. We mm -hmm. boosted our employment ad. Um, something happened because we received four applications. Now, so, yes, people do. You've received them or sent them out to inquiries? We have actually received them. Uh -huh. Good. No, so these are to be volunteers or? No, for the part time position. Part -time position. Um, I mean, the downside to a Facebook ad, uh, as I've learned, is that we received a lot of interest. But a lot of people don't read what it's for. So mm -hmm. one guy, you know, his degree is from the University of Caffeine or something. I mean, there's some of those crazy things, yeah. and then a few people who are just really nice, but aren't certified at all. Mm -hmm. so, but luckily, we've got several candidates that we're working them through the process now. Uh, the forceful entry training door was delivered uh, on the sixth, which is the day that would have been two days ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, manufacturer did an in-service, so six of us were trained, plus Chief Miller, Captain uh, Brown from Cedarville. And we received 1500 bucks from the Cedarville Fire Department Firemans Association um, as their payment into it. it was less than we were hoping for. It was less than they would asked for, but uh, probably more than we were expecting. So. Is, is our association <laughs> kicking in any? Or is they paid 2500 bucks. Oh, yeah. yeah, they paid the down payment. Uh -huh. Which was nice. So we paid the 7500 then minus the 1500 from Cedar Mill. So we're the 6000 of what our share is. So we were housing it, so I guess that's fair. Um, so the original idea was a, like a three way split, um, but apparently Cedar Mill doesn't operate that way. But it costs 7500 It costs 10000 Oh, it costs 10000 Yeah, okay. So the association did the down payment with 2500 mm -hmm. We did the rest, and then Cedar Mill us the fifteen hundred. Um, so Nate and I are going to meet with um, Chief Miller over the next two weeks or so uh, to come up with an MOU on when they use it, because there's consumables that go with it, you know, little pieces of wood that right. go on the door, uh, and what they're going to pay. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to front those costs, obviously. Well, we won't front them, but we won't mm -hmm. reimburse. So. Um, <clears throat> and then we received um, our 2018 billing summary from MediCount. I don't know if you guys have a copy of that. No, not already. Okay. Um, so on, the, on my report to you, uh, shows what we did last year. Um, we had $456,000 in charges, what we billed to insurance companies. Uh, we received $167,597. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, but it's down 22.7% from the previous year. Now part of that is because we had less transports. So that's a big, you know, we released, treated and released more people. Uh, and then uh, Heath, our rep, had also advised us that with changes in the ACA that were taking effect in 2018, our reimbursement would come down and something like that. Um, so our collection rate dropped 8.8% to 83.9%, which is still one of the highest that they have. So that's wonderful. Um, and our net revenue um, dropped 10.9% to $303 per call. But that's still actually significantly higher than most everyone else that we do. They are still very impressed with their numbers, and they continue to think that part of that is that my attention is a highly insured area, which is which is nice. But um, then we looked at this, there's some recommendations we have, the individual billing rates. We haven't changed ours, I think, since 2014. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. So he uh, made some recommendations uh, based on his discussions with MediCount uh, to change a few of the things. He looked at what the average was for all the other departments in MediCount field within our area. Um, we're way below. Um, so the recommendation is to keep the BLS calls the same. And that's the majority of what our things are. It's $650. Um, MediCount agreed with that. Uh, the ALS calls, where our paramedic is doing skills, ALS 1 is just a basic paramedic call, and ALS 2 is where we do the whole thing. <laughs> um, to increase those, uh, ALS 1 from 750 to 785, and ALS 2 from 850 to 982. Rates more in line with what regional things are doing, and increase our loaded mile rate from thirteen dollars to sixteen dollars per mile per loaded mile, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that should help increase some revenue a little bit also. <coughs> and again, all that is paid by the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. uh, companies are more off, as you can see in that 
front page charge, we wrote off $66,280 for residents. Mm -hmm. Well, residents and then hardship cases, for yeah. instance, we don't hard bill. Um, and then the adjustments are like you have in your EOBs from your insurance company. It's the stuff that they do to do. Mm -hmm. Most of that is the Medicare and Medicaid. You know, yeah. they just adjust things. Mm -hmm. so, um, so in the past, we've had you guys just do a motion to accept these rates, and we'll let them know if that works for you guys. It's not a huge increase, and again, it's not, not going to affect people that pocket it because it's just going to the well, I'm really process. impressed with the process. Good. Do you have any input about the rate change? I mean, do you support that? I would support it. I would make a motion. Uh, I'm not quite sure how the wording would go to adopt the Rate increases identified on page two of your memo. Yeah. Second that. Can we discuss about the rate increase? Your memo, we vote, please. Mr. Hoster? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. When it says averages, um, average, is that like what aver the average insurance companies? Oh, and that? Yeah, what's, what's it? The Those are the averages of the Medi-Count, what Medi-Count cost, uh, what other departments are charging in our area. Yeah, okay. So then okay. the average goes out and we found it was, again, below in almost everything. So. And that is primarily just because we don't, I didn't realize most departments look at this every year and increase the rates and we're a little bit on the conservative side of that. So. so in an insurance page, they pay, don't they have like a flat rate that they'll pay regardless of what you get billed? <laughs> in well, Medicare, yeah. right? They pay a flat. <laughs> Medicare pays whatever the heck they want. Medicare and Medicaid. <laughs> um, I mean, medic, these are all based on their rates because CMS sends out what they'll, what they're willing to pay for ambulance things. Um, we have some insurers that pay whatever we bill. Uh, typically, the pension uh, insurance. So there's someone out there who's a uh, postal employee retiree. Whatever we bill, they're there. Um, <coughs> a railroad guy, same thing. Hmm. And the Bakers and Confectioners Union pension plan. Sometimes they actually pay more than we bill, which is really <laughs> bizarre. So, they pay it in donuts. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. <laughs> but um, most of our patients, it's a mix of private insurance and um, actually, it's in here. I think the sixty percent of ours were private insurance, or primary. Sixty point five percent, point eight percent of Medicaid, and thirty six percent of Medicare, mm -hmm. and then two point eight percent. <clears throat> Which is pretty surprised much in line with. Surprised that Medicaid is so low. As was I. Well, I think Medicaid is so low just because um, it's that's it's, it's under payments because they, they don't reimburse much at all. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, I mean, like standard, what do we pay? BLS one, a BLS call room, which is a lot of Medicaid patients, will charge six fifty and they'll pay us ninety three dollars. All right. Wow. <laughs> yeah, state of Ohio Medicaid budget pretty uh, stingy. But, you know, it's revenue we wouldn't have had in the past. So. So yeah, thank you very much. I'll notify that account and we can do that. Um, just something else to mention. We've been doing the, uh, Ian's been doing all the annual safety inspections for the apparatus, which are all required. And everything's actually been pretty good. I mean, it's had to replace batteries in J2 and all six need to be replaced. Uh, it's a lot of batteries. Uh, the rescue needed its batteries, but it's actually been a lot. Some of these things you're like, oh, we need to replace those things. Mm -hmm. And then Medicaid two had a problem with its, uh, it's got a hydraulic strength system in the back to keep the ride smooth and they were leaking. So uh, the labor wasn't covered, but the parts were covered by the warranty still. So mm -hmm. that was good. But other than that, is that in good shape? Any wood around here? Nope. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> fake wood. But <laughs> so that's us. Okay. Anything else, Don? Anything that comes to the Nope. I would like to uh, request an executive session for personnel uh, compensation. I move. Uh, I'll second, or I'll move, and then you second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. You guys, you guys switch. Did you move? Really yes, second, I did. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, because I thought of no, I figured what. Well, you know, it's moved. been double moved. So. <laughs> Are you notice the power cords not on that? Oh, it's on battery power. Oh no. I'm gonna plug it in. 
Nice notice. <laughs> Okay, now. All right, we are back from the executive session, and I believe we have a motion as a result of the uh, discussion. I would move that we increase Danny Powell's salary to $60,000. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? I have a second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding that motion? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that should be. That's it. I will be out of town Friday through Sunday night at the National Park. Mm -hmm. Unless it's completely snowed in. Where is it going to be? Uh, the National Park has in Maryland. Samuel Stefan coordinators meeting that we always do there. Is it in Baltimore or is it another? It's in the middle of nowhere. Oh, it's in Emmitsburg. It's the Panhandle. Here, uh, Hagerstown. Mm -hmm. yeah, beautiful place. Mm -hmm. They're Camp David, actually, so I'll be. I'm staying at Camp David. I'm not. 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 I'm <laughs> no? Okay. Got anything else? Nope. All right. Uh, new firehouse report. Uh, we're uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. So we're done with public advertisements for the bidding for the new firehouse. Um, the bids will be opened a week or Tuesday coming up, the 27th. We had the pre bid meeting on Tuesday. There were 12 uh, attendants, attendees. Um, <laughs> yeah. For, um, and I said to myself, you know, this time as many as the last time. Well, of course, why would anybody from the last time, the last two times, have come this time, then you know, to listen to the same thing again? Right. So well, venture one did. Yeah, that's true. A couple of them did, but most of them were new, which I guess is good because that just, you know, is potential more uh, vendors. So um, I'm, I'm encouraged. <clears throat> I believe that's really all for the new stuff. Whatever happens this coming Tuesday will be big news. It will be big news. And hopefully positive. Yeah. Don't let me forget to advertise that on the Bowling Board website. Oh, this coming Tuesday. Oh, it is this coming Tuesday. Oh, right. As, as an yeah. official meeting. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. So that's Tuesday at. Does anybody remember? One thirty? I believe it's one thirty. Tuesday the twenty seventh. <coughs> yeah. Oh, we got it. No, that's not right. No. Well, today's the twentieth. No, it's Wednesday the twenty seventh. Yeah, it's next Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Oh, it's a Wednesday. Oh, that's right. The last bids were on Tuesday. So yeah. These were. On <coughs> yeah, one thirty. Right. Yeah, I can do math. Right, one thirty. Good thing I was here. Here again. Yeah. <laughs> Cemetery Road, the road administrator uh, has been plowing, was plowing most of the evening, so he's uh, not here with us this evening. He did give me a call and we talked about what might be uh, top of mind, and he let us know that he had conducted three burials um, over the past period, and I believe has one scheduled for this coming Monday. I think that's what he said. Uh, we did a road tour. Uh, public meeting last Monday? Week Monday? I know it was going to be on Thursday, but you had to change it. it was oh, yeah, we Thursday, changed it to, to change Friday it. because of the snow. It was out last Friday. Um, we uh, uh, marked a lot of roads to resurface next summer in the collective bid with the Green County um, Engineer's Office, and he uh, codified those requests for the engineer and took them down there and submitted them and roughed out uh, approximately $105,000 worth of uh, repairs for 2019. <coughs> okay. Substantially more than we've done in the past, but uh, we do have the funds for it and we do need the uh, we do need the maintenance on these roads. So. This is probably a good time. It's a good time to send you to do it. Do you have cash? Yeah. 
<laughs> Show me the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of cash, we talked about acquiring a, uh, another used Bobcat for the road department, and he's been in conversations with um, Bobcat of Dayton and Columbus. They're all the same. Uh, it's the same company. And they suggested a couple of machines, and um, um, they were like bookends. One was a little too high, and one was a little too low, a little too expensive, and one was a little too cheap. So I sent back a memo of the guy, said, maybe we can get this just right. <laughs> so we're going to work on that. There, there's no hurry for it, though. The, the old one still runs. And the uh, representative came down and uh, kicked the tires. I said they give us eight thousand for that one, and uh, I think two thousand or twenty five hundred for the uh, attachments for it, which would not fit on a current model. The current one we have is a nineteen ninety one or ninety three model. Really? It is old. It doesn't have. I mean, it doesn't have a zillion hours. It's got a little, little over fifteen hundred, I think it is, which is not much for equipment, but it's much for the amount of work we put this one through because um, it's few better days. But anyway, mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty good trading. Of course it's you know like <coughs> if you want to buy a new car they always jack up the price and, and but these are using ninety one one we have. Wow. Uh, the the, the used ones would be buying used ones still it would be. One was the expensive one was a two thousand sixteen uh, with less than five hundred hours on it for 42,000 before the trade-in, and the lesser expensive ones of 2015 with 900 hours on it for 28,000. And I just thought that was a little too many hours to start up, start off with. I'd like to keep it under five. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying myself. I'm just saying that's what the department regular recommendation is. We'll see what we came up with. Like I said, we're not in a big hurry. Um, and that's all. So, anything else for this road slash cemetery? <coughs> Hearing none, then we move to the fiscal officer's report. Just so I can be a part of the team, I have another resolution for y'all. I have something for you here. Um, <laughs> this is the uh, resolution 2019 8 amendment of temporary appropriations. <coughs> Whereas in this ongoing process to determine appropriations for the fiscal year 2019, and whereas it is required to submit all appropriation changes to the to the 2019 budget to the county auditor. Now, for the trustees authorize the following change to the temporary appropriations and they instruct the fiscal officer to submit them to the county auditor. And the general fund. <clears throat> um, these are just temporary appropriations that we increased, which we're, I remind you that the temporary appropriations were basically just a quarter of of what we would normally appropriate. Um, so it was increased by um, 5,146. And I believe it was um, maybe about $1,000 over what we had appropriated for the year. So it was a little bit of an increase. Uh, Road and Bridge uh, property insurance increased by 2,846. Um, I think I wanted to increase that by Less than a thousand dollars, maybe. I can't remember right your, now. Your explanations are confusing me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Are you saying increase to five thousand one hundred forty-six or buy? Well, buy. It w I think I if, 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 yeah, um, the temporary appropriation that we did for this, which is um, kind of my bad, I would say because <clears throat> I kind of forgot. I, I usually we you should have front loaded them. I should have front-loaded because I know it's always in the beginning of the year, and lots of times we have our temp our current preparations already set in place by now. Anyway, uh, and so <coughs> this is a one-time charge. It's just one. It's just our annual thing, and you know, and each one of these um, did go up a little bit from our what our we had uh, spent last year, but uh, it's it's confusing, Don. Uh, it's confusing for me. I'm glad I'm explaining it. And anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, and the cemetery fund uh, advertising was increased by $800, and that's basically due to the, the postcard mailing thing that we did. Um, and then um, uh, for the fire fund, we increased that by $1,969. Now, I know the, the rates went up because we increased the, the equipment rates, which we talked about last right, time. Right, right. But I was under the assumption that our 
our yearly premium was basically supposed to be the same forever. Isn't that what they said when, when we signed up with them? I don't remember. No? Okay. Sure, sure. I don't remember. All right. Um, well, it's not that much. No, I mean, I, I could go get, you know, what we, what we spent last year, and I know it wasn't outrageous, you know, but increases on all the other ones. The fire one, funny, is the one, you know, to get a bit of a jump because of the, because we were underinsured. Mm -hmm. The fire department was, so. Anyway. Um, is there a motion to approve resolution 2019-8? I would make that motion. Mr. Collins for seconds. Mr. Collins for seconds. Any further discussion regarding 2019-8? What are you grinning about? <laughs> uh, well, go ahead, please. Have your okay. <laughs> Buses. Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Um, as far as our permit appropriations are concerned, it may be, um, you know, you all can, we can, you can give me any suggestions, changes that you want to make to what the information is you have been given. I know Colin has just started to look over his budget, his his appropriations. So, so we can do maybe do it at the next meeting. Okay, I, I mean, I know, I know you're good. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but I don't know. I have heard anything. Yeah, the next meeting would be great for me. Well, if if, <laughs> if you um um do you still have the uh, the temp the appropriations that we proposed for 2019? And Don, do you have one? Have the, the information you need. I have the information. <coughs> I have I'll be ready by next. Yeah. Or I'll, I'll communicate before. If you want to, yeah, give meeting. me your get your suggested changes. You know, we can incorporate them or we'll talk about them and whatever. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Okay. Thank you. And um, I did um, uh, visit the newspaper, and so and well, I guess the day papers gonna be a day late, but Friday, this coming Friday, and next. Thursday, there, there's an, um, a public hearing notice for to hear the zoning amendments um, at the March 4th meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sure. Okay, the paper. Done. Right. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Um, since you are the official parliamentarian, we need to uh, go <laughs> back to the fire department report and back to the executive session and back to the motion following the executive session. How you should you rewind the tape? Yeah, yeah rewind <laughs> <laughs> How would you like to do that? Would you like to amend that? We need to change that. Okay. I don't think we need to go back and do executive session. No, but we can talk about just the, the emotion itself. <clears throat> should we amend it? Should we? Yeah, uh, yeah I'd say, you know, move and second to amend the previous motion. You want yeah. to be to what, what it's going to be. Let me just go ahead. <laughs> I'll make, a, make another motion. Uh, my motion was to uh, make uh, Denny Powell's salary $60,000, and that was based on a roughly $5,000 increase uh, with the information that his salary was... <coughs> 54,600, and now I'm told his current salary is 57,033 dollars. So a 5,000 increase would be 63,000 dollars. So I would like to make that would just make a new motion mm -hmm. uh, that we raise uh, Danny Powell's salary to 63,000 dollars. Is there a second? A uh, second. Any further discussion? I, I guess we ought to throw in that that, uh, that is not a step raise. That is in consideration of the additional responsibilities he's uh, undertaken as a result of our contract with Bath Township. And uh, the bulk of the work that's going to happen out there is, is, is going to be EMS as opposed to fire. And that's his basic responsibility. So. Uh, this is reflecting that additional uh, responsibility, and this money will be come directly from the, um, the, uh, the contribution from Bath Township for the service we're we're providing. And if at the end of the year we feel that we're not being adequately <coughs> compensated for what service we we're providing them, we'll um, negotiate uh, 
in an additional amount at that time. So um, anyway, that's. And I should toss in that in the calls we had in January, the five medical incidents were all transports, mm -hmm. and uh, three out of the five transports. Mm -hmm. So we'll have that yeah. kind of swaps. So. Yeah. <coughs> um, any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Beecher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. <coughs> okay. All right, so then we will get back to the zone inspector's report. <coughs> won't be until the next time, but kind of in there, uh, I just wanted to let you know that Green County is undertaking revising their 20 year comprehensive plan and making uh, uh, initial plans and uh, initial conversations with MDRPC to assist in that <coughs> process. And of course, as this goes along, this is going to be a, a minimum of a 12 month, it might be a little more than that process of um, visioning. Everybody remembers our our friendly visioning uh, sessions uh, in the past, but we'll have more <laughs> coming up um, and other things. And then this is we'll, a 20-year land use plan. Yes, the county plan. Right. Uh, and then in addition, uh, the 2020 census is approaching. It will begin uh, in April and the county is intending upon putting together a uh, complete, what's called a complete census committee, uh, which they're dedicated to getting the most accurate count possible. And you need to keep in mind that the, the census determines a, a, a zillion things, but the main thing, one of the main things it determines is what your proportion of uh, federal dollars are distributed to your jurisdiction based on all the <coughs> factors that censuses generate uh, housing units and you know, number of you know, family members and you know, incomes and number of causes. citizens. Yeah, citizens. Uh, so you know, we need to support that process as best we can um, as we go forward. So. If I hear things that we might be able to do, um, I will let us know. Um, standing committee reports, MBRPC. Oh, um, do I have a list correct now? Yes, we do, thank you. Um, uh, well, the, the main things we did is, is we had a nice presentation about the census coming uh, coming forward, and um, Brian House gave an excellent uh, impact study. Or I'm sorry, Brian House, Matt Lindsay gave an excellent impact study on the uh, Miami Valley Trails. Is this the board directors or the executive committee? This is the actual directors committee. Okay. Um, and Brian. Yeah, he is. You Brian, Brian passed Lindsay? out. Matt, Matt Lindsay. Oh, Matt Lindsay. Brian passed out his, his uh, executive director's update, and I noticed that the um, the little blurb on the new ODOT director, Jack March Banks, uh, which is very impressive, he's going to be the speaker at uh, Bob Geyer's annual uh, meeting in March. So, March 12th. March 12th. So, you might want to take a look at this just to get uh, <coughs> a little better than that. Uh, oh, you did break that down. I don't know what we need to do executive committee. I'm sorry. The first one, did you add that? I added the tax thing. Yeah. I that's the one that wasn't, that I kept forgetting to do. Okay. I didn't, I don't ever remember the executive committee. Yeah. I mean, the board of directors. Well, I can, you know, yeah, it's really easy on the computer to more, one of those. more things to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> well, usually that's, that's really boring, because all it is is approving payments of the board. What, the executive committee? Yeah. So you want to fix any of that? Yeah, I think so. We'll just do the board of directors then, okay. and the tech committee, right? Okay. All right, well, it might take me a couple months to remember that. <laughs> so, uh, TAC committee. Uh, the next meeting is tomorrow. Oh. And I did not go to last month. close <laughs> last month. And so I have no report. Right, we'll look forward to the next one. 
Uh, regional planning, we did that last night. It was really just a couple of very small uh, uh, agenda items. Uh, we talked again about the census. We talked about comprehensive plan. And we also uh, made a excellent decision to increase the compensation of the uh, only full-time, excuse me, only full-time assistant, I guess it would be now, to uh, the director, uh, Jessica, because she's been doing excellent work. <coughs> and, uh, I told you about that in the annual report, which I never did put my fingers on it, but I did bring work that she did about uh, preparing for the census, and uh, <coughs> uh, she put together this uh, this brochure about about the county census and uh, a lot of statistical maps about how all the different jurisdictions have uh, historical um, uh, response rates. Re response rates. Thank you. These are the opposite response rates. These are not the positive response rates. These are the negative response rates. So, I'll take a look at that. That's Jessica's just work also. And the mill side. I did a, I did a P and L for the mill. I forgot to print it out and bring it, so I'll do that the next time. A P and L? Your profit loss for the year. That's the short P&L was. <laughs> That's talk. I thought you would. <laughs> um, Mark, anything going on senior-wise? Um, or economic sustainability-wise? Economic sustainability, I did go to the last <coughs> two meetings. The the last one was um, our um, analysis of the first one, <coughs> which was <laughs> our retreat, mm -hmm. um, which was very good. Um, the, um, statements and analysis that um, people made in response to the retreat were infinitely valuable and uh, as far as I'm concerned it gives me tools to think about our function <laughs> as a township in relationship to the Economic Sustainability Committee which is <coughs> mainly focused on the village itself. Mm -hmm. Of course. <coughs> Is any of that up on a website yet? No. But um, it can be, once I learn how to uh, Well, I thought maybe, maybe the commission posted on the village website. I don't know. For a committee, not commission. Cemetery chatter? No Clifton Cemetery chatter. Um, I do have a couple uh, call them reports or we could put them under old business. From Clifton? No. Oh. Okay, well, then. <laughs> but well, not on this list. <laughs> okay. Um, have, we haven't received a maintenance invoice from Dan, have we? For 2018 for Clifton? Uh, no. Oh, we haven't. I'll have to get on that. No, we don't. We'll talk to him about that. I think we will. I think we shall. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's new about that time of year. <coughs> uh, I already talked about the census, so I lost my new business. So, old business. <coughs> uh, I talked to Lamar Spracklin about the, uh, the land lease corporation uh, that has been 
getting options on land for uh, solar farm mm -hmm. in the eastern part of our township and mostly mm -hmm. in Cedarville. Mm -hmm. And he said they're still underway. I thought the activity was over. Um, they're still looking for farmers and he was guessing it was a 50-50 chance that it would actually come to pass. Mm -hmm. that, uh, but it, again, there's active solicitation of, mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. options mm -hmm. on uh, farmland. And uh, not just, it's not just an issue of a direct option for um, putting solar array up, but also access for running <coughs> above ground or uh, buried mm -hmm. uh, connecting power lines. Mm -hmm. Uh, that it's impractical in some cases to go in the public right away, and they, they want a new right away from private landowners. Mm -hmm. uh, and then separately, um, not directly township business, but I think of interest, I went to uh, the new uh, director of agriculture, Dorothy Palanda, made a presentation at Springfield. Yep primarily to farmers, uh, but it was uh, focusing on a renewed emphasis by the new uh, state administration on agriculture as uh, a primary business and that Jobs Ohio would shift a lot of its focus, not away from other kinds of business, but would add agriculture as one of its priorities. Excellent. Um, I, I was extremely impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that I mean, viewing uh, not just farming but agriculture related business as <coughs> a priority and something for job expansion. Not, whereas often people are talking about it as just kind of maintaining what we got and status quo. Well, they're really gearing up the system. I was, again, I was really impressed. Supercharged. Great. Thank you. Uh, any other all business? Mark, you got anything? My only thing is the website is just about complete. Uh, I've sent links to everybody, including you, and I said, well, for review. So um, perhaps by our next meeting, we'll end up going live. So anything else this evening? Hearing none, I entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move, but we have a second six. Ooh.